Hey everyone, this is James here from the Dev Genie Academy. In this particular episode, we're going to be looking at how to import an OBJ model into our code. So without further ado, let's begin. We want to first of all start in our utils class, because in here we need to create a function that allows us to read a text file. So we begin that by creating a public static list of strings, and it's going to be a function called read all lines. We need to pass in a string file name here, and we can create a local list of strings and it'll call this list and inside of a try we need to do a buffered reader of br equals a new buffered reader of a new input stream of class dot for name utils dot class dot get name and outside of one more bracket we do dot get resources stream and pass in the file name inside of this try catch we do a string line and we just do a while loop so while line equals br dot read line while that doesn't equal null and I need to actually pass parentheses around that there as well. So inside of the while that we do list.add and then we pass in line. So that builds our entire file into a list that we can read and we can adapt in any way we'd like. Obviously finish the try with a catch of an IO exception and a class not found exception. And then finally we can return the list. So into the object loader class now and we need to create a, another function in here. We're going to be calling this a public model load obj model and that takes in a string file name and we can then create our list of strings called this lines and needs to equal the utils read all lines function we've just created and we can pass in the file name there as well. So next up we need to create a few more lists and a few more local variables. The first one's going to be a list of vector 3f's called vertices. The next one after that will be a vector 3f of normals and a vector 2f of textures. So vertices of 3f, normals of 3f, textures of 2f. And we also need to create another one, well I'll just import that, we need to create another one of vector 3i and this needs to be called faces. So after we've done that again, again I need to import that too. So then we can create a for loop of the string line that we just created called lines and we can then do string array of tokens. This then equals lines dot split and we need to split that on a double backslash s plus. So we, now we've got that tokens, then we can do a switch statement on token zero. And if token zero's case is v for vertices, if it's v t for vertex textures, if it's v n for vertex normals, and finally if it's case f for faces, we can break. And then we can also add our default at the bottom there as well. There we go. So depending on what our token zero starts with determines what list the values go into. So if it starts with a V, it goes into vertices. If it starts with VT, then it goes into the textures. And if it starts with VN, it goes into our normals. And finally, if it starts with F, it goes into our faces. So for the vertices one, all we need to do is create a local vector 3F of vertices vec. We're going to instance that to a new vector 3F. And we need to say float dot pass int of tokens sub one and we need to do that two more times for token sub two and tokens sub three and then all we need to do after that is just say vertices dot add our vertices vec so this line here is very similar to what we need to do in the vector normal so we can copy that into that bracket and we just change it to normals vec and here we go and we can add the normals vec to the normals list let me just move that comment to the top so it needs to be normals dot add normals vec and i've spelled normals wrong at the top there we go so into the vertex textures now so again it's very similar not much difference but we create a vector 2f this time of textures vec and that's going to equal vector 2f and then we do a float dot pass float of tokens sub 1 and tokens sub 2. There we go, let's get rid of that comma. There you go, token sub 2. And then we can do textures dot add textures vec. So that's all of that done for the vertices, normals, and textures. But now we need to move on to the faces. But before we can do that, we need to create a new function to organize that list. So let's create a private static void of process face. It takes in a string token, a list of vector 3i's of faces and we have a string array of line token 
and this equals token dot split. This time we just need to split on a forward slash. So the next thing we need is an integer of length, and we need to get the line token's length from this one. So we can then say the int position equals negative one by default, the int quads equals negative one, and finally the int normal equals negative one as well. So all three of our values are instanced to negative one by default. So position will then in equal integer dot pass int of line tokens sub zero. And we need to negative that by one as well. So if our length is greater than one, we then know that there is a texture in there, so we can create a string texture coordinate of line token of one. Then our quads value can equal texture quads dot length. And if that length is greater than zero, we can then say integer dot pass int of texture coord negative one of course, or it equals negative one, which it always does anyway. Next up, if the length is greater than two, we then know there's a normal there. So we can say normal equals integer dot pass int of line token sub two. Negative one again, of course, I almost forgot. So now we've got all of those values, we can then create a vector three i of faces, or faces vec, and this equals vector three i of position, coords, and normal. And then we can just say faces dot add faces vec, and that there's our function there to pass the values into the face. So back in the faces branch of the switch statement, we can then say process face of tokens sub one, faces, and then we can do that two more times for token sub two and token sub three. So that's that switch statement and the for loop done. So after the for loop, so after the second bracket, we can then do list of integer, and this is going to be indices. This needs to equal a new array list, a float array of vertices array, and this again needs to instantiate to a new float. And we pass in vertices dot size multiplied by three for the length. We can then do an int i of zero. And then we need to make a second for loop of a vector three f pos of vertices. Inside of there, we can do vertices array sub i multiplied by three equals pos dot x. And we can do that two more times for pos dot y and z. But in the vertices array length, we need to do plus one for the y and plus two for the z. We can then do i plus plus at the bottom of that for loop. After the for loop again, we can then do a float array of texture array, or texture r, and this equals a new float array of vertices dot size multiplied by two this time. And then we can take another float array of normals r, and this again is going to be a new float, and we pass in vertices dot size multiplied by three. So now we've got these two more float arrays, we can then do another for loop of vector three i of faces, or face and then faces. But for now, we're gonna leave that for loop empty and move on to another int array of indices array. And this is gonna be equaling a indices dot stream dot map to int. And inside of the map to int, we can then do an integer v and then a lambda expression, which is just a forward slash and then a greater than symbol and we need to put a v in there again, we just pass that to array. Make sure that the integer v and the v both match in case, unlike I've done there. And then all we need to do is return load model of vertices array, textures coordinate array, and indices array. We're not using the normals array yet, but it's there for the time being and when we do need it, which will be the next episode. So going back to that faces array, we need to create another function, which will be a private static void process vertex, it's going to take in a, quite a few different parameters, so it's going to take an int position, an int texture coordinate, an int normal, a list of vector 2f's of text quad list, another list array of vector 3f's, which is going to take in a normal list, another list of integers, which will be the indices list, and a float array of textured quad array, a float array of normal or normal array, yeah. So once we've got all those values done, we can then do an indices list dot add, which just adds position. We can then say if texture quad, if that's greater than zero or greater than equal to zero, we then do it vector two f of texture quad of vec. This is going to then equal texture list dot get texture coordinate and we can do 
a texture coordinate array of pos times two equals texture vec dot x. We can copy that line and change that x to y and pos multiply by two plus one. And that initial one needs to be one negative texture coordinate dot y. Another if statement needs to be if normal is greater than or equal to zero, we then do a vector three f of normal vec, and that's going to equal to normal normal list sorry dot get normal and normal array of pos multiplied by three, which equals normal normal array dot x, and again we can copy that two more times and change the x to y and change the x to z. And it's again plus 1 and plus 2 for the y and for the z. So once we've got those two if statements done, we can then go back into that for loop and we can do process vertices, passing in face.x, face.y and face.z. We then need to pass in textures and normals. Then we can pass in the indices, the textured chord array and the normal array. And that's the load obj function for now done. We just need to come back next episode and add the normals array. But back in the test game class, I want to get rid of all of the vertices, the texture coordinate, and the indices list that we've created. They need to be gone. And we need to change that loader.load obj model function. And we're going to pass in models forward slash bunny dot obj. So this is just the Stanford bunny obj model. So in our file structure, where the shaders folder is, if we create another folder in there and call that models, and then I'm going to put the Stanford Bunny object in there. Stanford Bunny object is a object you can get on the internet, it's very freely available. And I'm going to add a texture to it, which is blue.png. It's basically just the grass block object I had, but I've just painted it completely blue. So the dimensions are exactly the same 1024 by 1024. And when we render that, we can now see the Stanford Bunny. It's got the texture loaded. Problem we've got with this, it's very dark. So in the next episode, we're going to be adding some ambient light. But until then, thanks very much for watching. And as always, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below.